So, hello everyone, my name is James Shockley. I'm surprised this many people showed up for a, a talk on use uh, laundry appliances, but here we are. Um, so cool, I am a founding engineer at Norello, um, the company with the Pringo on the logo. If you haven't heard of us by now, well, you've lost that game tonight. Um, I've got a big story to tell and I'm pretty tight on time, so we're going to get right into it. First, I've got to set the scene for y'all with a little bit of world building. It's December 2023. My girlfriend and I had just moved from a tiny little apartment to a big for us townhome. And as part of that exchange, we gave up a perfectly good washer and dryer set. Now me at the time, I was in a sling recovering from a major surgery. Um, I was also helping to build Norello. And my free time was zero, my tolerance for bullcrap, zero, and my ability to consume another meal replacement shape was also zero. Emily, my girlfriend, absolute angel, more the biblically accurate kind of this moment. <laughs> Unfortunately, we had a convenient laundry situation that saved our day. It was a decently convenient walk in price from where we were, so we felt like we kind of had it made. And after a few weeks, though, the deal we had with this laundry machine devil started changing. Um, first, it started innocently enough. We pulled out the load and it kind of smelled like pickles. It'll, it dried out a little when we dried it, but uh, suffice to say, from this point in the story onward, we had a certain je ne sais quoi about us. Um, the second was those dollars really started adding up over time. I mean, you don't realize it until you're in the situation. And then finally, you also had to be on this like 4 a.m. cold shower grind set in order to be able to even get a load in. So, suffice to say, the deal was not that great anymore. We knew it would be better and more convenient at this point to get a set ourselves, and we knew roughly that we needed something cheap, reliable, and that also had to work on our schedule, right? Because again, I'm completely useless at this point. It also had to be delivered. So, <clears throat> suffice to say, I was being extremely picky, and I rationalized that to myself since we were so wrapped up in the company. I mean, at this point, we were launching a presence in India in preparation for this thousand-person hackathon, um, and it was just a lot, right? So I made an intentional decision that we would just smell like pickles for a while. So, <laughs> for a few weeks, until it became unbearable. So we set a date to solve this problem. We settled on a Saturday, and we told each other that we would research and prepare in advance so that we did not roll into the day like an accident. And the day arrived, and, and we rolled into it like an accident, right? So we started the day putting together a plan in two completely disparate ways, overall just not communicating. Not with the stores in order to call to see what was available, and certainly not with each other, because that would require an admission that we didn't do what we thought we were going to do. So we were procrastinating, coming to terms with the fact that we had procrastinated. After about 45 minutes of working on our lists, uh, we just decided to sit. Right, just call a store, see what they got, and we did. We called a major home appliance reseller around us. It seemed like a quality service. Uh, the customer service was there, um, and they maybe had cheap prices. Fortunately, they did. So we called, they say they have one in our budget. They just put it out onto the floor a few minutes ago, so we drive, we're there. I'm in front of it. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like looking at the lid, I'm moving, and I'm like, yeah, this looks like a washing machine. Um, just overall not having my ducks in a row, right? And that's when somebody came up, and they took the tag off it, and they walked to the register, and they bought it, and there was nothing I could do. <laughs> and my heart sank. And, and standing in front of you today, I can tell you that I haven't seen another deal like that come up since then. <laughs> So it was painful. The, I, despite not deserving it at all, the universe manifested a W for me and I still managed to fumble the bag, right? So Emily and I get back. We had learned one thing though. We learned we needed to get serious. It was then that we decided that our manual vibe-driven approach to solving this problem was just not going to cut it. The spreadsheets that we had been working on independently needed an upgrade. So at this point, the first couple stores were starting to close in two hours, and we were well aware that we were not going to get what we wanted for out of the day. So we committed to doing the most that we could with the time that we had remaining to do what we should have done in the first place and research. Emily would drive out and be the boots on the ground because again, still useless over here. But uh, meanwhile, I'd be running dispatch for her, right? Telling her which stores to go to in order to make it to the most locations before they closed. So to summarize, we had a traveling woman going to sales where we want to optimize for the number of locations 
Yes, if you are thinking of this is a traveling salesman variant, it, you are correct. It is a traveling salesman variant. So I'm not really going to be able to get into the solution today, um, but oh, this is what it looked like when somebody bought that washing machine underneath me. It was, it was painful. Um, it also indicates just how painful this day that it was that I remember the day. But yes, it's a traveling salesman variant problem. I'm not going to be able to get into this today, but I'm doing a long form version of this talk at the Carolina Code Conference for you, and I would love to go into it in detail there. So um, anyways, back to this, right? So let's pause on the solution and let's come back to the component parts of the problem, right? In order to solve this, we have a need for something beyond traditional Google Maps, which tells you the distance between your location to n number of locations. We actually need n dimensional lists of uh, distances between all locations relative to one another. So I create, so I, in order to do this, I created a personal Google Cloud account and I created a quick little script using the GSP stack or green, Google Sheets and Pandas. Um, all it did was execute Google Maps API requests, consolidate those into a Pandas data frame, serialize that to an XLSX file, which I could then upload to our Google Sheets so we could work on it, right? Um, so, anyways, you do that. The Google Maps API just tells you whether or not the location is open. It does not tell you their business hours. So you have to pop over to another API to determine what those hours are. You have to flatten that nested structure into a call and format so that you can use it. And then you actually need to use another API, the Google Distance API, in order to find the location between these stores relative to one another. Whew. But after that, we had the <laughs> we had the optimal, we were able to calculate the optimal route for bed. So by, so at this point, like, yeah, stores are starting to close in a couple of, in, almost, almost immediately. Um, but by the end of the day, fast forward, we had been able to pare down the number of locations by about 30%, which isn't too bad, right? You may be thinking that there's what, like five locations left on our list. This is when I failed to, remin failed to mention, Mr. Hypothetical Straw Man, that we started with over 40 locations. Um, so while this is where the day ends, it's definitely not where the story ends, and we haven't even gotten to the good part yet. So we're working with around 30 locations at this point, and I could be flexible enough in my, war in my mornings with work to act on a deal if it came up, but I couldn't be like checking websites all day, right? Nobody has time for that. So my goal was to get an event-based solution in place to tell me when these deals came up as soon as they went up for sale, so I didn't get a deal pulled out from under me. The requirements were that were writing a general scraper uh, to use the URL of each location on our list and perform a recursive site crawl. Um, the goal at this point is just to find the businesses that have their inventories posted online. Um, the second is to review those output, outputs manually and look at the individual inventory pages and determine whether or not they are worth following up on. And then the third final step is to actually parse those inventory lists and create a scraper for that. Um, unfortunately, that scraper was not super painful to run locally. So for a while, I just ran it locally off my machine and it took a couple minutes to let it run in the background and do its thing. And I found myself in this mere, weird middle ground where I had a manual process that wasn't too painful to run and it just, I couldn't muster the effort to automate it. Um, and that's where it was for a while um, until I was talking to Jim one day and he was like, dude, this sounds like an incredible talk. You've got to do it. And I remembered, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, dude, you are looking for a low effort solution to remotely send your data you're looking for observability, um, and it all just has to work and be easy. Aren't you like founding that product? So, yes. <laughs> so Norello came in. <laughs> yeah. So, so I set up a database using a free serverless Postgre database. Find one, there's dozens. Um, I built the database schema to mo model roughly my own, because at this point we're just looking at a listing, some metadata about it, and a reference back to Google. Um, from there, I committed that since Norelli uses a commit-based workflow. This may be familiar to anybody who works with source code version control. Um, I created an environment which is basically like a container for these entities that references them together and allows you to enable settings, two of which are of relevance here. 
One is observability, which will give us query level and API level observability for free. Um, and the second is automatic migrations, which meant that when I inevitably had to change something about my schema, those migrations would be applied automatically for me. Um, yeah, we also pick a region. You can self-host a gateway. I'm using one of our cloud ones here. But more on the gateway later. So here's what it looks like to review your migrations after that they just get applied for you. If you've uh, done a database migration before, this should look roughly familiar. I'm going to uh, give some example data here for the scraper using the mock data generation. So this uses a large language model in order to generate a mock data set for you based on your schema and the metadata that we have about that. And in this example, it's actually really good because those uh, place IDs, those Google Place IDs, are actually fitting the right format for a Google Place ID. They aren't a UUID or something else there. They look to be valid uh, Place IDs. Same thing with the URLs as well. Um, so whatever, you migrated my database for me. Thank you. But how do I interact with that? So here I'm using in the UI to demonstrate what, interacting with one of the REST <coughs> API endpoints that we run for you. This is just creating a listing for us um, for that hypothetical tree fitty, but I ended up using the TypeScript SDK to run it in my code. Um, here is what the query level observability looks like. I'm really just interested in seeing how many counts of new listings going in are actually occurring. Um, and this tells me roughly how many things uh, are, are coming into my data set, right? But none of this matters if uh, Bay is not able to look at either, right? So we um, also have this, uh, uh, yeah, I already showed it earlier, but we also have a data viewer um, so that you can view that in the UI. So what I found is after a while, the results started rolling in for uh, listings which matched our criteria, right? So I started hitting the streets to execute. And I only have time to cover one of these stories tonight, and I want to set the scene here by showing you their website, which I've already lorem ipsified, and the images are blocked out because either A, they're identifiable to the business, or B, Godwin's Law has been triggered tonight. Um, so I've got to start with showing you the homepage, and I really want you guys to appreciate this for me. Now, I did run a lorem ipsum generator through this website to replace all the content, um, and I just want you all to appreciate this with me. It's not the lorem ipsum generator that is causing these overflows. This is intentional style. This developer has style. They have something that they're going for, and I love it, and I loved it enough to reach out to them for an interview, and I'm hoping to be able to share that with you guys at Carolina Code Conference. So this is art, right? And um, so back to the inventory, right? Let's stop getting sidetracked. Which, also, inventory list. It's incredible. So I find one that we want. They had a deal, and I'm in the car, I'm out there, I'm going to this guy. Uh, we talked on the phone, we got a price, you know, I had an out-the-door price for this thing delivered to me, and I'm there, I'm excited, I'm in front of him, I've got my check in hand, ready to deal with him, with this man of, like, morals, um, of class, right? And I write the check, and I hand it to him, and true to his word, so I left, and <laughs> because uh, because my higher power uh, respects that all my dollar head doesn't play no game. So he did have one thing for me before I left, though. I did not leave empty-handed into the night. He gave me a little cartoon booklet, and it's out there, but I don't have it with me right now. And this is probably the part where you think that I'm going to show you some pictures of it from it, but I've been showing them to you this entire slide. <laughs> I'm Jay Shockley, this has been Scratched In Data, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>